Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are excited today because we are here to uh, put on our crowns <laughs> and sit on our thrones because we are talking about Hallmark Royal movies, but particularly non-Christmas. And it's kind of a full circle moment because the first ranking that we did kind of like this, we ranked the uh, we ranked the uh, Christmas in July movies. But I think even before that, we ranked the Hallmark Royal movies because they uh, for for holidays because they were having one for Christmas in July, and so we uh, we ranked that, and uh, it was really fun. And so now we are doing the non holiday royal movies and i'm from could agree to wagner and terry's here hey how are you doing i'm good and they've even added more christmas royal movies since then yeah it's true yeah there's a bunch that we might include. have to wait till after this year to do an update <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i think you'll agree mm. that going through these these non-christmas Ooh. royal they, they're a lot not as good no it, uh, <laughs> it's like so rare some of the older ones are but i mean i have a rant because you know how much i love these royal movies but <laughs> nowadays it's like ever since harry and megan they're like oh look yeah. at this poor royal he doesn't <laughs> want to be royal or they don't want to be royal anymore like yeah. feel sorry for them because Such they're rich i know they're rich they're royal <laughs> and they're overprivileged they just yeah. want to be normal. I'm sorry, and, your 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 super hard life of like oh my gosh, ships you know. and and hugging babies like it is so <laughs> not to be not tough. to be hateful towards you know <laughs> that type of lifestyle, but like there's no these are like modern day fairy tales. Yeah, they're romantic fantasies, and there's no escapism towards that. Right. I'm not daydreaming, Rachel, of falling in love with a prince who wants to give it all up to become a photographer. Right. <laughs> you know what i mean like well I mean, yeah i think that there's usually could be some middle ground oh sure know? totally you mean? Yeah. uh that they could probably be a photographer and still be prince but um, a hobby? i don't know what the, uh, the especially these but you know maybe they, some of these maybe some of these fake countries are just really strict i mean i don't know rachel because it just <laughs> seems like some of these are older so not all of them are like that but I've just seen the, the trend now, and especially, right. you know, because I seek these out. They're all like, <laughs> I want to work at a hotel or nobody's daydreaming of like, I, I want to find a partner who struggles to pay rent. You know, <laughs> nobody's daydreaming that. Right. right. There's no I escapism. Mean, these there are is, fantasies, you know. There is one that follows <sighs> that formula that I think does it right that I really like, but I get it. And I agree with you in general. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that whole like, Oh, woe is me. It's so hard to be Royal. Like just, yeah, just kind of bring takes back, the fun out of it. Yeah. Just bring back the fairy tale, the escapism, you know, Yeah, yeah. just, you know, like, what was me? Uh, you're still rich. You're still Royal. I mean, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so there are 11 that we mm -hmm. ranked. I originally had 12. I had smooch on this list right. originally, but we decided because he's not really Royal. I did misremember that. I thought he was a prince because it plays on the frog prince, but he's a Marquess. So yeah. So he's, he's a lower like, ranking royal. <laughs> yeah. So we decided not to count it because I didn't have time to rewatch it. And it'd been like eight years since I saw it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we have 11 on this ranking that we're going to talk about. And, and, you know, I remember when we did that royal ranking uh, originally of the Christmas, I was like, these were a lot better than I remembered. There were a lot of good yeah. ones, but this was the opposite. <laughs> the yeah, rest of these are were... not great. They're fine, no. but uh, not the best. No, but there was one that I was remembering and we watched and I was like, oh, this is better than I remember. Yes, yeah. there was one that was better yeah. than I remembered. But I would say almost all of them, the chemistry is just not there. I'm not feeling no, it. And I, I agree. I yeah. don't know why uh, these royal movies, the chemistry system. I think I think part of the problem is that with the premises that they have, they spend a lot of time on business. Talking about business, Absolutely. whatever party they're doing, wherever fundraiser. And so there's not enough swoony scenes. No, it's true. They don't do anything romantic. There's nothing swoon worthy again no escapism you yeah, know well and a lot of them they end up spending most of the time with another 
love interest. Absolutely. And, and so you don't get enough swoony scenes. So that's why I think the chemistry is sometimes lacking. Yeah. Uh, in really all all of these except for one for me, the chemistry is just not quite there. But mm-hmm. uh, but you know, they are enjoyable for what they yeah. are. But uh, let's dive in. Let's talk about what's your number 11. Oh, I have the Hallmark movie that forgot that even Hallmark forgot was a Hallmark movie. And that's the William and Catherine, a royal romance. Same. Uh, same. Oh, boy. (laughs) How did they even get Victor Garber and Gene Smart to play Charles and Camilla? I I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, it I mean, it has a really good cast. Yeah, nothing against the cast. It's like competently made. And it's really just about the engagement and how they how uh, William and Catherine have met. And it's just so boring. Like it's so boring. (laughs) And you wanted a little bit. I'm sure that the Lifetime movie that was made around the same time. I have yet to see that one. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. But it's got to be more fun than this. This is just one would hope, but I don't know. (laughs) It's just (laughs) like, I mean, I would just rather watch a documentary about William and Kate. I know. I I question like the majority of all of this isn't even true, but it's probably more factual than the sixth season of The Crown. Mm. Uh, (laughs) But I digress, you know, I won't go down (laughs) that road. But like, there's a part. I think they wanted to make it relatable to to everybody. So the royals are very relatable. And there's Mm -hmm. a part where the queen is playing like Wii Sports with Catherine, like tennis. And I'm like, did she really do that? I I have a hard time (laughs) believing she did. Well, and and would the royals do that today? Absolutely. But would the queen do it? I don't think so. (laughs) It just needed to be either like more campy or or more totally. just something it just felt like okay i know yeah. all of this like about and like the stuff that may or may be fake like wasn't interesting fake i don't know it's just kind of like I, and it's just like well because you have to add some things you don't know you know they mm-hmm. don't know every single minute of their courtship right and uh, i get it because they're still together it's still you know it's a successful fairy mm-hmm. tale in, in essence he's royal she was a commoner you know Right. But I don't know. This was so boring. I really contemplated because I watched this on YouTube. You sent me the link. I <laughs> contemplated putting it on two speed. I would have supported like, you in your choice. <laughs> so what I did was I tilted. I cooked during this. I tilted the <laughs> and like made dinner. I cooked. And I, guys, you could do, you know, yeah, so many things at once. But it was <laughs> so... I needed something to keep me awake. It was. <laughs> it was a snooze. It really was. It was. It was, oh. it was bad. Uh, yeah, I also have it at 11. Well, what do you have at 10? Uh, my Summer Prince. Yeah, I don't um, have that much higher, but uh, no. yeah. It's funny because I looked at the director and he co-wrote it, Peter Sullivan, and he's done so many Lifetime thrillers, mm-hmm. like some of the wrong movies and a lot of those bonkers thrillers that I like. Yeah, uh, I think this is a... He's yeah. been on the pod. We've oh, had him and he's yeah. done a, a watch I mean, he's along. Done so much. I've actually done. met him. I went to lunch with him. He's a super nice guy. Uh very t- you know talented. Uh yeah. but uh but yeah, this it, it it has its flaws. I have it just a hair higher just yeah. it's for like, a couple reasons I'll just Yeah, I, I think it's well made and he's like a, a super king director. He's done so many yeah, good things really like is. that we've watched and loved and Sure, sure. I but it's funny because uh, this is one of Taylor Cole's earlier Hallmark films. Yeah. And she's partnered with Jack Turner, but they don't have any chemistry no. here, but they have so much more chemistry in the One Winter trilogy. They work mm, so much better yeah, in those movies right. than they do here. It's weird, but like, you know, I mean, it's he's a bad boy prince. He's stuck in America. He gets in the tabloids. She's an assistant for PR superwoman, uh, Lauren Holly. It's fun to see her play like you know a hard boss and and she poses as her and and then she's got and he his handler is uh deanna troy from star trek next generations <laughs> marina spiritus and so like they have a great cast but it's uh it's a little lackluster 
Yeah, no, I mean, I agree about the chemistry, and yeah. uh, I do think that Lauren Holly elevates it. She's really oh, totally. she's fun. so she fun. Just, yeah, she's so. That's not a boss you want to have, you know. <laughs> and but. I do think the nuts and bolts of the actual script, maybe not the plot, yes. but the dialogue thing. It, Topher Payne, he's like a really good writer, yeah. And uh, so it does elevate it just a hair. But uh, but for me, I have at ten. I have fit for Prince. Mm, I have uh, that a little higher. I I don't know why. I'll explain it when I get to it. Actually, it's a lot <laughs> higher. It's just just a bit of a bonkers in that one. Yeah, <laughs> no, definitely. And it was fun that it was the same time as stocked by a Prince with these same oh, leads. Oh my that gosh! Was yes, the exact same names. <laughs> I just love the Mean Girls in Fit for a Prince. Yeah, just I can the see whole that. Mean Girls got a mean, you know. The the and- thing for <laughs> Fit for a Prince for me is it just gets too bogged down in business. Too much time right. spent with her, like it basically running the sweatshop. <laughs> How many people? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, she's a wannabe fashionista. She's a seamstress. Yeah. She wants to stand out. And he's like, make me a suit. And mm-hmm. he wears the exact same thing throughout the whole entire movie. So, you know, I was like, come on, guys. But I love the mean girls. And there's just a yeah, campness that. to it mm-hmm. that I really enjoy. That's why it's higher on my list, just the campness. And those mean girls, like the way they destroy the dresses. But in a blink of an eye, Rachel, those mean girls turn good. And I'm like, what's yeah. going on here? You know, yeah. so it's weird, <laughs> but it's, it's, you know. Yeah. And the, creepy. her boss, the, that's like stealing her designs and stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's pure camp. Yeah. But seriously, watch this one and then stalk by my prince. It's like, <laughs> yeah. And so, we have an episode, me and yes. Lisa, we recapped both, which was fun. So, uh, so what do you have at nine? Uh, a winter princess. Same. I have the same. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, another one with Natalie Hall because she's yeah. also, but she's the princess in this one, but she is the commoner in a uh, a fit. Um, right. So I mean, this is one of Chris McNally's earlier Hallmark movies, right? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. I, I I forget the reason why she's incognito there. She doesn't want people to know who she is. She even changes her accent. And well, no, and they they I don't they explain that. She doesn't have an accent because she went to school in in America. Oh, that's right. That's right. I, I thought she switched that. up or something her like accent. that. Like you wouldn't something have an like accent. Like that, yeah. And because Casey her because is... Casey Manderson shows up as her brother. Yes, yes, and uh, you know, and it's so funny because you're like, oh, let's. Pl-. It's a plan a party movie essentially. They're planning this gala, this charity function, and it's also a plan a party and save the business movie. Yeah. And, you know, like, they need a celebrity. Oh, she's a princess, you know, a hidden princess. Will she yeah. come save the day? It's yeah. ridiculous. And, uh, and we, we, of course, we love Natalie. And oh, she yeah. actually, we did a patron watch along for this movie. And she was delighted. So that was fun uh, to watch it with a, her. Yeah, there's a fun level to it, too. But it is like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has a great cast. Of course, yeah, it does. Brendan Zub as the oh, other yeah. love interest. <laughs> uh, he's great i love him and uh, and then chris is charming and so totally. it's it's watchable but yeah I it's so. it's very silly it's, it's it's very silly which i enjoy like be silly mm-hmm. more than like <laughs> i want to be a baker or whatever you know yeah yeah ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. 
That's patreon.com slash homeworkies. I have Winter Princess also at nine. Mm-hmm. So what do you have at mm-hmm. eight? Well, I know everybody loves this movie, but I have Once Upon a Prince. Um, oh, yeah. The, the gardening movie. <laughs> <laughs> I know this was written by Tracy and Dreen, right? Uh-huh. Based yeah. on a book. Yeah, based on a book by Rachel Hawk. Uh, mm-hmm. That one I have not read from her. But basically, it's like this dude... You know, he, he starts working for this girl who's like turned down an engagement and he's like, oh, you know, let me hide who I am here. And, yeah, you know, I start working at her parents like gardening shop and he helps her get landscaping <laughs> jobs. You know, it's like so bizarre. And then she never knows he's a prince until, you know, paparazzi pictures come out of them. And his mom is like, you've got to come home because you're going to be a king. And his mom says, invite her. She'll work as an apprentice to redo our garden. You know, because she thinks that'll show him that he can't love her. And it is so weird. And I don't even know if it matches the book at all. But like, Mm -hmm. this is a new curveball. He's going to be king. And he's like, but I love this gardener. You know, so it's, I know everybody loves this movie. It doesn't work for me. You know, I was saying that in general, I agree with you, but there's one that did it right. And yeah. this is the one oh, for me. This, this, like, yeah, this... I know I'm in my, the minority when it comes to this movie. I know I am. I love when he he's like angry gardening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, this, and his like... mom's like, you're not happy. And he's like, Argh. I mean, it is funny because, you know, they're like, it's a gardener. <laughs> you know, it's like it is. And this is the only one of these movies that I think they actually have chemistry, that they work together to me. And I guess that's maybe why I'm able to go with it, with yeah. the 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 whole right, yeah. And that he and he kind of like sort of stumbles into helping her. Oh, and totally. Then he's it like, oh, I actually like, really like this. And I like Yeah, doing it. it isn't by choice, you know. Yeah, it, like... so it kind of it kind of works to me the way that they they do it, and it's probably just because Tracy and Dreen is a legend and yeah, so good, such a good writer. But and it, Megan Park uh, Park makes these things work because she also did the a Queen's Christmas, the mm-hmm. Royal Queens, yeah, yeah, where, where he wants to be a jazz pianist and not a king. Um, and she makes that work. And, yeah, I uh, like that one too. Well, people <laughs> go see her new movie that she wrote and directed out. Um, I don't even know if I could say the title, but it's uh, yeah. my old. Have you seen that one? My old rear end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen it, but I, I want to, and I've heard it it's is. Really good. It is quite charming. It's not. Oh, perfect, you saw it? There's, yeah, I saw it. it. Was a secret movie that I went to go see. It's an Amazon movie, so it'll be on Prime Video before you know it. But I, I do think there's a lot of charm to it, and she's got a good eye. Um, yeah, you she know. does. She so. and, and the the fallout that is definitely not a Hallmark movie. It's very intense. No, but, but when I saw her good. name in there, I was very like, good. I know her. I was yeah. like, she she does Hallmark movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I have at number eight. I have my Summer Prince. That's where I have it. So oh, okay, pretty, yeah, pretty close, pretty close to to you. And uh, I think it's just slightly elevated by Lauren Holly's very fun performance. And when she <laughs> she gets the the what is it like? Well, she gets like chicken pox or something i believe so yeah <laughs> it's been a bit since i've seen this movie but i know that she <laughs> has to pose as her boss yeah <laughs> and uh, i mean you watch that for her yeah like, yeah the and, supporting and i do good. think that script is like pretty pretty decent like if you oh, were yes like if you you can tell that it's somebody who's like good at their job and like made what they could like I what mean, did you think about her dress at the end because a lot of times these big when they make their big grand entrances the dresses aren't all that uh yeah we'll definitely be talking about that uh, coming up um some more <laughs> better than us and it, I, I thought it was like eh, it's all right but it's not bad in, the, in this one you know no it's it's uh it it's better than uh it's better certainly than the dress in the new one the, the final big dress in we'll talk about that was mm. terrible yeah um it's better than the royal matchmaker dress in uh, my opinion. yes so oh, it, but it the was once decent. upon a prince has also a good dress i think yeah yeah, yeah. nice and sparkly <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have at seven? Oh boy this is where i have the new one the love on the danube royal getaway 
Mm-hmm. Now, I like this movie, Rachel. I thought at the end it was good, but it is. There's been choices with this movie. That beard, that fake beard, for instance, yeah, like they committed to that for quite a while, Rachel. And I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> but I mean, essentially, and this is on Hallmark Plus, and it's the second movie in the trilogy. But essentially, from what I got from these two movies are they're basically episodes of The Love Boat. If anybody has ever watched rerun reruns of The Love Boat, it was a show from the late 70s and most of the 80s. Where, you know, these people go on cruises and they fall in love and the uh, crew members help them with all bunch of problems. And that's essentially what these movies are. And, uh, and this is definitely a rich man's cruise, Rachel. Like, we could not afford this. <laughs> or I couldn't afford it. Mm-mm. Let me not speak for everybody. I could not afford this rich man's cruise. But no. he is an art-loving prince of a made-up country. And he's questioning whether he wants to be king or not. Because I feel sorry for him, Rachel. <laughs> Yeah. Feels you know what? I think that they use the, do you, when you watch Masterpiece, Ugh. there's always those ads for Viking cruises, Viking riverboat oh, cruises. Oh gosh, yes. You know? And I Beautiful, feel like it's the though. same one that they used. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Hallmark Maybe. missed it. Hallmark missed a a, a a sponsorship opportunity. I mean, if they're, if they're, totally. if they're uh, sponsoring, if they're sponsoring uh, PBS, it can't, they can't be I mean, that hard to get. <laughs> they was out. On the beautiful cruises. location shooting too, but <laughs> no, he he's he's incognito on this, yeah. on this cruise ship. You know, he's getting some art from his uh, family's, you know, charity, whatever. And he meets yeah. her. She also loves art, and she's you know mourning the loss. I I almost got married. You know, she's still hung up on that. And they spend a whole entire movie where he never tells her the truth of who he is. Yeah. Just walking around sightseeing and talking about art. But at least they kiss a couple of times in this yeah. movie. There's an early kiss like to like get you invested in them. Mm-hmm. So there's that. The conflict is kind of grown, but but yeah, uh, it's like wh- oh, but it's you didn't minimal. Tell me who you were, you know. It's, it's like- minimal. It's not until the very end <sighs> and uh and but I I I I uh, I have it at 6 uh this yeah. one, but the, it's not bad. It's it, just the relationship mm-hmm. does grow pretty authentically. Yes. Like they're just is most of the movies just them talking. Exactly. It's just them talking and sightseeing. Yeah. Which I approve because I can't I travel because I'll never afford to it. So I like these sightseeing travel movies. Yeah, but, <laughs> but it's uh, not like uh I'm staring at a wall for an entire movie, you know, uh, like oh, with yeah. Andrew oh. Walker. This 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 was <laughs> like they're actually like getting to know each other and you feel like when they kissed, I was like, I bought it. They've they've been yeah, falling in I love. Really like it felt pretty authentic. Yeah, I really appreciated those early smooches. I was like, yes, because that, yeah, that was gave nice. a little bit more life. And like Catherine Disher is great. Yeah. And she's a constant in this so in this trilogy. And she's kind of given a little bit of a little bit. Yeah, of she's love. got like something going on too. I was like, no, stay with him, <laughs> girl. He wants you. Yeah. You know, maybe he'll he'll become a like surprise he, cameo I, at the third movie, you know. And, I feel like that's coming. Yeah, I feel yeah. like, you know, they're going to, you know, because uh, she, she talks about finding love again. And I was like, he's yeah. right there. You know, this poor man, though, his poor butler has to deal with all his shenanigans, you know. <laughs> and um, but it, I do feel like I wish he would have told her sooner who he really yeah. was because they could have worked through it. And I just feel like once they that comes out with, again, paparazzi photos, you're like, oh, it's the same old conflict and it's. The same and, sort of steps, you know? Yeah. And who cares? Like, yeah. anybody be like, well, I'm not going to continue seeing you because you're a prince. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> so the keeping it a secret really does not make much yeah. sense. And they, uh, but it is funny. <laughs> he was like, oh, I know castles. I'm fine with them. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> but I well, also hated like, oh, I don't want to be royal. And I was like, get over yourself. <laughs> that could be me, Rachel, but I'm so tired of seeing <laughs> Well, he ends uh, up letting the the brother be the yeah, the, sweet, you the, know, the king because eh. it's it's such a a burden, such a burden, Rachel. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it probably is in real tough. life, but like this isn't real life. Uh... <laughs> like I said, your tough schedule of uh, of christening ships and kissing babies is too much to take. Well, well, to play devil's advocate, they're probably doing that like fifty times, like you know, like a hundred times a day, every day. So <laughs> I think I could. 
I could christen a lot of ships before I, I started you, being a princess. I'll be honest with you, Rachel. Like, it probably wouldn't be great with the press hounding you, but I could yeah. live that life. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I could live that life. I'm I ready to go. If there's any yeah. uh, yes. obscure monarchs you know, out there. <laughs> there's any fake countries that always have British accents that <laughs> these fake countries always, for the majority, are always on, <laughs> yeah. bordering the south of France or the French Alps. You ever notice that? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You know, so like, hey, if you need a queen or a princess, I can manage it. Yeah. I can, I, it'll be good. I'm ready to go. <laughs> 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 well, my number seven is where I have Royally Ever After. I do have a fondness for Ooh. this movie because yes. it was the Royal Wedding movie. It was that weekend of the Royal yes. Wedding. Yes. And yeah. uh, so I have a lot of fond memories of doing the podcast, talking about the Royal Wedding, recapping this. Uh, it, and it is unique that they are an established couple at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. It's not a get to know you thing. No. Uh, he, I love that movie. And uh, <laughs> so, and Fiona is obviously adorable. Uh, how could you, how could you not <laughs> like Fiona? She's so like this, this queen. I mean, come on. I just, uh, I absolutely adore this movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they're from Jersey too, but her yeah. parents sound like they're from New York. Oh yeah, so like what's so for a lot. Here? That's the one thing, yeah. <laughs> and I think he was still on Rain, right? When this uh-huh. uh, movie came out, like I think yeah. Rain was still on the air too. So he was like, "See, I know him from Heartland. British guy. He was on. He had. A, he was like a rebel cowboy riot rodeo guy on Heartland. Oh yeah, <laughs> that tries. But to, yeah, to, this is tries to. He tries to get uh to get Amy uh, away from Ty. Uh, and there's like a, a, a kiss it's very like scandal and uh <laughs> yeah but this was his his era of like being the swoony british guy in I, these shows yeah i guess yeah. i do i do like this is much higher on my list because i have a fondness for this movie i just mm. love it so much i loved it when i watched it and this I one does think, have a really pretty dress it does and i like it because Like, he's in Jersey for a year, and he wants to marry her. And then he finally tells her, like, I've been afraid, but I'm I'm a prince, and one day I will be king. And I want to get married, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I need my parents' permission. And she really thinks about it, you know, because she's a teacher. She has to think about her career Uh and her life. But she goes with him to try to make this work. So they're like a couple. And his sister is awesome, like, because for a while, you don't know if she's good or bad, like, is she trying to sabotage him so she could be queen, you know? Yeah. There's a question mark on that. But it's like basically a couple working through that stuff. Nobody's mm-hmm. giving up anything. Uh, they're just, you yeah. know, trying to get through the hump of my disapproving parents, you know. Um, and that's what's unique about it. Yeah. But it's, I, I love that. it so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what do you have next at six? Oh, this is where I have a fit for a prince. Because I just think it's campy and it's and she's so clumsy too. And just think of her as queen being clumsy like that. And yeah. I like it too because he's not gonna he is he is going to be at first it's a little like oh, the monarchy is so stuffy and you're like, oh no guy, please don't. But he's gonna become king the following year. And and he's not gonna give it up, but you know. Yeah. And I love the mean girls and everybody's trying to like get his <laughs> attention because he is going to be king and this this clumsy girl just accidentally gets it, you know? And there's just the campness about it. I don't know. I found it to me I find this very fun a fun watch, you know. Yeah. I can I I I I I can have fun watching it too. I get yeah. that. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Jennifer Snow and her new book, All Signs Point to Malibu. This delightful and steamy new rom-com asks the question, what happens when the mystical convinces you to break up your ex's wedding? Think my best friend's wedding, but woo! Haley Harris is a successful life coach that has visions of the future. When one of her visions predicts a not-so-happy ending for her ex Liam and his brand new fiance, 
Haley sees it as a sign and plans to launch Operation Breakup, but before she has a chance, Liam's sexy, irritating best man starts messing with her plans. Will she push forward to sabotage the wedding, or will a speculative twist change fate forever? You can buy All Signs Point to Malibu this week at your favorite bookstore, or use the affiliate link below and find out more about Jennifer at jennifersnowauthor.com. That's jennifersnowauthor.com. My number six is where I have the new um, Love on the Danube Royal oh, Getaway. Yeah. It's a little boring but i do think like, it does build this relationship pretty authentically and i i don't think they have great chemistry but i don't think anybody in this in this ranking has great chemistry so it doesn't yeah. hurt it too much did but, you see uh, the, but, yeah did you watch the first danube movie love song yes would you say this one is better than that one because i think it's slightly better than love song but they're both on par yeah I thought they were both solid. Yeah. Um, I did think that one was probably, I liked the plot a little better. This one yeah, was a little I agree. boring yeah. to me. I think this one's like a little bit, like there's more location shots, more sightseeing. Like you can really get like they're on a cruise. This is what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Then love song. But like, yeah, I think they're both on par, you know. Yeah. They're about the same. Oh. That one, uh, the... Oh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> they all start to mesh together after yeah, all the Hallmark movies. Um, but the I do think that the element of her mother and the anxiety and the performing and the oh yeah, that was, was a great part of that was one too, a nice that, part of that parents. one and pretty well yeah. done. Yeah. Even though her mother looked way too young, um, but, I think but, that they looked matching, like they could be mother and daughter. But like father and son, he there's like probably five years difference. Yeah, it's them. really ridiculous. <laughs> and like the idea that I don't, I don't think that one was casted that well because even though I like both those actors, it just like the idea of Nesneen's character sitting across from Wes Brown and being like, "I'm not, I need to find myself. I'm not ready to start a relationship." I'm like, that "You're is- forty. What are you doing? Like, come Lady- on." Not only that, but she's literally saying that to Wes Brown, who is yeah. so dreamy in this movie. Like, in that movie, he was like, I was like drooling. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I was like, why are you so dreamy, <laughs> Wes Brown? Like, you look so good in this movie. Yeah, maybe I do think this one's probably a little better, even though I think yeah, it's a little just more boring. Yeah, te- with a, a few technicalities on, the, you know, so-and-so, but they're both yeah. on the same. Yeah. I definitely think if you have Hallmark Plus, you should check these movies out. Yeah, yeah. they're solid. They did a good job with them. Yeah. Uh, at least so far. Uh, what do you have at five? I have a Royal Winter. Um, mm-hmm. I think this one's kind of cute. I like this one too. Uh, this is Merritt Patterson. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and Samantha Bond. She's She plays the mom, the queen. And uh, it's basically, he's a prince and he is on the verge of his coronation he's going to become king and he he wants to sort of be his own man and kind of free himself from under his mother's overprotective you know strict guidance he doesn't know how to be his own self like he wants to be a good ruler and and stuff he doesn't have that confidence and she is like on this vacation and she's sad because she feels like she has to take this this job that honors her parents and so they kind of have that when he accidentally almost runs over her with a motor uh, motorcycle, that's the meet cute. <laughs> and so they have that. That's how they bond, you know, trying to be their own selves. Uh-huh. And I believe this was now nah, I forgot where this was filmed at. Um, Bruges. I think this was in Bruges. Oh, that was it? I believe yeah. I could be wrong. Uh, or maybe. Yeah, I think it was in Bruges. But I mean, the city looks authentically old and majestic with those palaces it's great and i think they have you know plausible chemistry but i do feel like this movie works because once she finds out he's a prince and he's going to be a king they do try to make it work she does try to win over you know all these stuffy royals um so it's yeah it's, i it's before the time this. of i need to give i need to give up everything you know uh, I rewatched this for mm-hmm. the yesterday. Mm-hmm. It was way better than I remember. Yeah, it is. It is because I didn't fully rewatch it, but I started to watch clips. I knew I liked mm-hmm. it, but I was like, let me let me refresh myself. And I was like, yeah, this is better than I yeah. I remember. It was funny. So. It was witty. It kept yeah. the plot. It wasn't. I wasn't bored. No. Uh, it the script. I think it was a pretty solid script, and uh, and yeah. I was 
Yeah. Agreed. I was pretty entertained by it. Yeah. There was yeah. this moment though. It's an unintentionally moment that I will never forget, but it is like when she and her friend, I think her character's name is Maggie. When they are at a museum and they come across the Royal portraits, <laughs> Those portraits were something else, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. were just, they didn't look at all like <laughs> the actors resembling them, you know, like <laughs> they were just so awful that I, I, I had this memory of when I first watched this movie, I had it DVR'd and I, I literally paused it to laugh Yeah, at that particular <laughs> moment because I will never forget it. It's just something that sticks with that movie. And I think this is why I love it even more so. It's good. It's a good movie, but like, yeah. <laughs> Watch yeah. out for that if you can. It's pretty <laughs> funny. You just, these poor guys probably had two hours to do that to, like, you know, yeah. the pop people. So, well, my number five, and this would probably be a hot take. I have a feeling you have this much higher. Uh, I have Royal Matchmaker at number I five. Do have much higher. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, is this movie is, 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 is watchable. It's fun enough. It's, you know, especially her, like, getting more and more jealous and, and like losing it and the whole thing with uh, Brittany Bristow and everything. I enjoy all of that. The problem is, is that they, uh, they spend so much time with trying to match him up with this other woman and not enough. There's just not enough swoony moments. I don't think between the two mm. of them, they really hardly spend any time together as a couple and it's very business, business, business. And so I don't know. I just think that hurts the movie as a whole and uh, it hurts the chemistry between the two of them. I don't know. I just don't love it as much as I don't say. mind it. I, I, this is much higher on my list. I actually like really love this one. Uh, I don't mind anything. I agree with everything you said, but I don't mind it. To me, it just works. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because Brittany Bristow, she should get her own lead in uh in one of I these I think she uh, has one movies. with Will Kemp coming up. Right, but they're in Australia. Yeah, but she needs a royal movie too because she she plays also the best friend in the uh the ice skating palace one, the Christmas yeah. at the palace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um but yeah, I there's something I just and I love like romance and chocolate. Together. She's in that. Oh, that's too. right. And that's royal adjacent because they're yeah. making chocolate for royalty. Um Yeah. But I guess we could have put that in this ranking. It doesn't really count not much, but yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really count. <laughs> I don't know. I just think they spend too much time on the business uh, and not enough signs of them together. Yeah. I do like the ending. I think is is real effective. I don't like her dress, but him, the, the king going, you know, going in, and then him going to find her and everything. I think that works. Uh, but yeah. I like I the know. premise. It's just a very, that was a unique premise at the time. And mm -hmm. still is because they haven't really redone something like that where the king is like, I, I got to find my kid a wife. Like yeah. you're coming in, you're <laughs> successful at this. And just her trying so hard. And, and they really unintentionally fall for each other. Mm -hmm. They don't want it. They just happen to do it because they start working together as well to raise money for this school. And it's like, I, I don't know. I found it very charming, so. Yeah. But I agree with everything you said, but it still won me over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't hate it, but uh, but yeah, I just... I do think Will Kemp needs to be in another um, royal movie. He could pull it off. Not the one he did last year for Christmas, yeah. but, uh, you know, Agreed. another where he's a king. You know, this time yeah. be a king, you know. Yeah, that would be fun. Be yeah. a king. Or maybe he just falls for a queen. Can we get a queen? Like, just a movie <laughs> just about a queen, you know? We don't yeah, have that would it. be fun. No. <laughs> Get working on it, writers. Let's do it. Working on it. Uh, I um, can think of something. Well, what do you have at four? Uh, I have a royal runaway romance. Mm -hmm. uh, this one really surprised me at how much I liked it. And because it came out, I think in 2022, right? I was surprised that she did not want to not be the future queen. She was totally okay with being royal. And I was like, whoa, that's refreshing nowadays, right? But <laughs> yeah, the premise she just is wanted like, a break. She just wanted to have one adventure before she becomes queen. And mm -hmm. and she falls in love or infatuated with the guy who paints her. And I think that's so funny. And she comes up with this plan. Oh, let me visit my uncle in America. And, and then she takes that excuse to like, I'm going to track down this guy because uh, we had something going on. 
And of course, you know, she's got an American bodyguard and it's essentially a road trip movie and shenanigans happen on road trip movies. Mm -hmm. And I just yeah. found it really cute. And I was so surprised was... by, because I did not have high expectations for this. Mm -hmm. and I was just so surprised that they just had fun. It's like, yeah, I'm going to have this one last, you know, adventure. And I was like, yes, mm -hmm. thank, thankfully. She didn't want to be anything else, Rachel. Yeah. But really just the thought of like, I'm going to track it. We had something going on. Like this guy loves me, right? He painted me. And I'm like, girl, come on. No, he don't. This one, I almost put it one. I really yeah, debated. I can totally see it. Yeah. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. Totally. For sure. What a surprise too. Yeah. And I give full credit to David Weaver director. Who's mm -hmm. he's, he's so good. Uh, we've had him uh, on our, doing one of our watch alongs. We've had him on the podcast. He is, really good at these movies yeah. and uh and and, and then uh it, this one is written by jake helgren who has also done watch along also been on the podcast he's great and i think this might be his best script that he's ever done mm -hmm. he uh really uh crushed it on this script yeah. it is a what good a script it's funny it's charming mm -hmm. And they don't have very good chemistry. That's what's holding it back. I mean, Brent Daudry, I just, he struggles, struggles for me, at least he struggles yeah. to get that chemistry with his co-stars and they don't have it, but everything I do think he's so very good in this strong movie, that yeah. if, if, if this had like almost any other combination, <laughs> I think I would have it at number one yeah. for sure. It I is can, yes, I really see solid it, yeah. script. Is what a pleasant surprise this one was, but I yeah. can see it. It's got the swoony scenes. It's got an, oh, like yeah. I was saying in World Matchmaker, where there's just not enough scenes of them like together and feeling that building that was that relationship. Like here, there are, and like the ending kiss is so good, and <laughs> she it's comes true. back to him, and it's yeah. it's 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 really fun. So this one was a big surprise for me. I'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Factor Meals. Fall is here, and that means most of us are busier than ever before. School is back up, lots of activities are happening, and we need a way to make our lives easier and healthier. That's where Factor Meals comes in. Cooler days are here. Fuel up for these days with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for all your fall activities thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great-tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 and use code hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code hallmarkies50 at factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Day number four is where I have royal hearts. I, I have that at three. I, so I think the relationship close. is the weakest part of this movie. I could have just not had it at all and which relationship the the andrew cooper and cindy busby oh yeah well yeah. I, I i don't i think james brolin sells this movie for me that i enjoyed it because... i agree i like i could have just had this movie be right. about her and her uh and him figuring out how to you know the weather yeah, because he even he be gets a, a kind of a, a love interest too in this one and and he's just like, he's just a rancher. He's a cowboy. He's in Montana. Yeah, and him missing his dog. and Yeah, like, and he's like, I've I've inherited this estate and I'm a king and this country's in trouble because if there's not a male sitting on the throne, 
they're going to get annexed by, you know, the neighboring country. And he's like, he really sits there and thinks about, I've got to try to solve this problem to help these people. Mm -hmm. And so he's king for a little bit. And his daughter, who doesn't want to be a rancher, you know, she's into books and stuff. And she over -romanti romanticizes everything. And I love it when he goes, you know, I read Pride and Prejudice. You know, because they also have the, the king of the neighboring country and her dating and, and getting engaged. And he's like, I read Pride and Prejudice. You shouldn't marry anybody you don't want to. And he yeah. really, it's also him as a father really trying to connect with his adult daughter. But I, but I she, do like, love how- does not, they like, spend hardly any time with Andrew Cooper. They have no- No, because like, she's, she's also in a she's triangle like, with, the stable, with the stable boy. Yeah, I mean, she's yeah. like arguably annoyed with him almost the entire film. And you're yeah. supposed to buy that- that and that they love each other so much you know yeah so and but, but I do yeah think this is probably cindy busby's best movie it you know what i didn't think about it at that time but if i'm just i'm going to include everything that i've seen in here even non-hallmark i would say yes i do think so as yeah. well now that i'm thinking about it on the spot yeah i mean maybe but, that yeah. first austin movie whatever dart what do they call it um the dog Pride and Prejudice. Oh, the uh, what's it called? Unleashing Mr. Darcy. Unleashing Mr. Darcy. Maybe that one's better. I don't know. I don't know. But it's like a ton, I think yeah. this is better than that. I think there are a couple of movies that she's done these last few years. Girl, get a new agent or something. Um, that's kind of unfair mm -hmm. for me to say because you know I'm not working or doing you know what she's doing. But yeah, yeah I her liked her Christmas movie great. last year more than most, but. Uh, I think it was like, what was it? Christmas Unlimited or something like that. Anyway. It's the road trip movie, right? Um, Yeah. With Corey yeah. Sevier. Yes. I actually thought that one was pretty decent. No, but, that one wasn't bad. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I do think this is probably her best movie. And uh, I I do. I love, you know, I love my grumpy old man. Oh, totally. <laughs> and James Rowland is, is really fun in this. And, yeah. until he's and this was shot it. in Romania. So it's like, it's yeah. got that old world feel to it as well and really pretty dress yeah that pulls it uh, pulls off the but dress. it's true like had it just been about him because he kind of figures out a way to solve the problem uh you know of mm. of not of the country uh keeping its independence and not being annexed he kind of solves it and it's so quickly wrapped up because we got to waste time with her you know like i love the stable guy who i keep yelling at yeah you know the stable boy <laughs> so yeah. i like the idea of she's a princess falling in love with a stable boy but um yeah this is this is surprisingly better than what you would think it was mm -hmm. and yeah i mean and it is nice this one you have the the usually these movies are about the common girl falling right. to the, and here right. she's the princess and uh and and she's a brand new princess brand but new yeah princess. yeah <laughs> but uh, i do it yeah it's a unique take on, on these royal movies mm -hmm. and i wish hallmark would like repeat it more because I, I feel like it's one of the forgotten movies yeah i think so well my number three is where i had a real winter i thought it was mm -hmm. yeah really fun on the rewatch i when i was first doing my ranking i had it at like seven and then i watched it and i was like this is cute I had it lower on my ranking as well. And then I, I pushed it up. I, I like I was reworking right before we uh yeah. started to record on this ranking. But yeah. Yeah. And so Very you have cute. Royal Hearts at three. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what do you have at two? This is where I have Royally Ever After. Mm. I just love this movie. Uh, I don't know why. It's just, it just spoke to me at the time. Yeah. And it was... Oh, because that was the year. I think they had like two or three royal movies that year. Oh, and no. The there were like seven that year. In total, there were like so everywhere. Many. Yeah, there was so many because the wedding was happening. And, uh, you know, if we could go back <laughs> in time, maybe we could change some of that up. But I just like this really spoke to me out of all the ones that aired that year. Yeah. Uh, well, no, because we also had royal match, uh, matchmaker that year. But I don't know. I was totally into these movies hold a special place in my heart i guess because i was so into it that year and how much i loved these royal movies and so yeah, let me yeah. see if i i can see how it's because it was 2018 right yeah there were so I many that year one too, so think. that year they had uh 2008 let's see here 
you got to put the, the dun 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 music this, Rachel. You got to add that uh, in. <laughs> Royal Hearts. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, right. That is 2000. Yeah. Um, Royal Matchmaker. I know. Royal Matchmaker. Too. Once Upon a Prince. That's right. Royally Ever After. How many is that already? We've got. That's four. Four. Um, let's see here. Lifetime had one too. Oh yeah, and that Up TV did. Yeah. Um, Christmas at the Palace. Oh yeah, I do. Bonkers, but I love that one. <laughs> <clears throat> so I guess there were five just for Hallmark alone. Just for Hallmark year. alone, like wow. Hey, you don't even think about it, but that's right. Oh, that one gave on Thanksgiving, the Christmas at the Palace. I'll never forget it because uh, we had we had to we had Thanksgiving at my sister's house, and the whole family was over, and my brother in law went to go drop off his brothers and stuff. And I was like, mm, I just put on my pajamas, and he came home, and I'm like laying on the couch. I was like, I'm in for the night. I'm not even going home. <laughs> because <laughs> i was like I'm, I'm enjoying myself too much and he was like okay <laughs> that's funny <laughs> that's my great memory because i love that bonkers movie but it's my memory of like i just gave i just gave up at that end and i was like nah i'm in my pajamas I'm that's staying. the one that makes me so mad because like how do you just leave you just left <laughs> i know i'm like staring at i mean like screaming <laughs> at the screen why did you just leave you didn't even say goodbye <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, I get too invested in these Hallmark movies. <laughs> it's true. It's true. So I have for number two, I have a Royal Runaway Romance. And yeah, I almost agreed. I almost put it number one. Uh, but I do think the chemistry in my number one's better. But I I think this this is an entertaining movie. The script is good, it's well directed, mm -hmm. it's it it it's fun. It has like funny moments, swoonworthy moments, it's entertaining. I think most people that have an open mind will enjoy this film. Yeah. You know, that, it's so surprising. Like I was so surprised to like it so much. It's such a treat. Mm -hmm. I, I just think a, a Royal runaway romance mm -hmm. was very fun and it was Did way you... better than I expected it to be. Yeah. And that then, lost yeah. the Emmy for TV movie to quiz lady. I didn't see quiz lady. Was that good? Which, which one? The Royal, uh, Oh, Red, White, and White, Royal Blue? Yeah, they lost, because they were up for TV movie. They lost it to Quiz Aww. Lady. Quiz Lady was actually pretty funny. Okay, because I haven't seen Quiz Lady, because I for sure thought that Monk movie was going to just beat it out. But I, I don't think it's better than Red, White, and Royal Blue. But mm. it was pretty, it was better than I expected it to be, <laughs> Quiz Lady. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, you're looking forward to that sequel, though. Yes, um, I am so that'll excited. That'll be fun. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, well, what is your number one? Royal Matchmaker. Uh, yeah. It's just, it just speaks to me. I love the premise of it. And um, I think they filmed that in Budapest. So it's yeah, got some lovely little right. shots. Yeah. Well, but guys, like listeners, tell us if you want us to rank any other royal movies because Lifetime has eight. Mm -hmm. Oh, seven. I'm mm -hmm. sorry because Rachel is a stickler. She don't like lesser royal titles and one of them is an earl. She's like, it's got to be top tier. Because remember when we did that for Hallmark? You were like, no, no Dukes or Earls. And I was like, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it just depends. I, I just hadn't seen Smooch in so long. that. Yeah. No, I misremembered that. I thought he was a prince. And he, he was not a prince. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, Ion has some terrible ones, too. I think they have five. Um, oh, yeah. There's some bad ones. There's only Even one good Cindy one Busby. in the Ion one. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Cindy Busby's a curse, like, to these world movies. <laughs> um, and to some of them. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, and Up TV has a couple as well. So, like. There was one now, good one on Ion uh, with, a, she was, like, a cook? Baker? A Prince for Christmas. That's oh, that's the one you think oh. about. She owns, she she has a restaurant, yeah, and he's yeah, coming over. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I like that, that one. one is the best out of yeah. all of because I have seen them all, Rachel. I have a list, yeah. people, so I, I I know, like I could keep track. Like yeah. I could look right now, like look up and see how many that you know Netflix and well, and of course there's all the um, the Christmas for the Prince Netflix. Those ones are pretty yes. bad. And Netflix have you ever has. watched um Jenny Nicholson's um 
review of Christmas with a Prince where she says it's a secret dystopian. <laughs> it's really funny. No, I've never seen it, yeah. but I can believe it. But I'll, yeah. I will say that I wasn't a big fan of the first one, but they have become so unhinged. Like it's a, it's an awesome trilogy to watch. Yeah. 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 And of course there's the um, Prince of Switch too. Netflix. Right. Netflix. That's another fun. trilogy. And they're all connected to each other. With Will Kemp in the third yes, one. Yes. In that one. And they're all connected to each other. And also like there's the night one too. That's mm-hmm. connected. Yeah. But well, yeah, Netflix has like six too. With a, like, <laughs> they have also Royal Teen, but those are Danish movies. So yeah. Well, I have Once Upon a Prince at number one. I just oh my think- gosh, Rachel, I'm so sorry. I thought you said you're number one already. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's trying. why I jumped to like, oh, tell us if you want us to rank any other movies. <laughs> yeah. But I so think sorry. that they have good chemistry together. I. It's the one that that works for me as far as this uh i don't want to be royal and i want to garden and when he's like angry gardening and uh <laughs> and mm. i i just i like it i think it's really well done and uh, so i have it number one <laughs> so, it, yeah i go. i am in the minority when it comes to um that movie mm-hmm. but <laughs> it does have its moments yeah so I asked on our Twitter and I have uh, Paul on on a free says they're my favorite kinds of romance movies. Uh, Spoonie TV says I'm not a big fan of the Royal thing and the Christmas ones are my favorite, but Royal yeah. matchmaker is my favorite by far. Once upon a Prince smooch fit for a Prince had good moments, but otherwise a dud like the rest here mm-hmm. that I've seen that are about the same uh pb says not a fan of the royal movies so i'll just say my favorite is a royal runaway romance by a lot mm-hmm. um christina her order she has royal matchmaker once upon a prince a uh, royal winter royally ever after a winter princess royal hearts royal runaway romance my summer prince love on the danube royal getaway and fit for a prince and then Caroline Hardy says a winter princess is the best one of the bunch. So there we go. There's fans yeah. of all of them pretty much. <laughs> yeah. So way to go. And uh, let us know what you think, what you think of our, uh, our rate. Let us know what you think, what you think of our rankings, what you think of our thoughts on the different movies, what your ranking is. If you do your own ranking video or podcast or blog whatever you do tag us and let us know we'd love to see what you think and what how you rank it and i'll put a the link to the list on letterboxd uh, so you know the movies we talked about in the description and uh terry it's always a blast thanks so much for uh, doing this and uh it was fun going on these tangents i i was i love a tangent rachel i'm all for it let us continue it on (laughs) (laughs) yes if people want to follow you, how do they do that? Uh, basically, I'm at Twitter at Flurry Heaven. Very good. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We sure appreciate it. And we have our patron group. We just talked a lot about different watch alongs that we've had uh with tons of the talent from these movies uh over the years uh so if in some of these movies we did winter princess we did things like that so uh check out the patreon it's definitely worth your investment and uh, investment in us and then we have the merch store where we have tons of fun fall designs you should take a look and we have really fun christmas designs coming i'm working on some new ones so check out the check out the merch store and uh, thanks so much everybody we'll talk to y'all later bye bye